Hey everybody, it's Dr. J, and today, yesterday, we are talking about acid-base reactions. Let's talk about chemistry. All right, so acid-base reactions, or another word for this is called neutralization reactions. This is basically when we're going to take our acid and we're reacting it with the base. So when this happens, all right, basically those two are going to come together to neutralize each other, okay? In which, in which we're able to produce um, water or a weak electrolyte and salt. Um, today, we're just going to cover the very simple basis of it. Um, if you want to learn more about producing that weak electrolyte and salt, I highly, I highly recommend looking at the General Chemistry 2 playlist. But let's talk about acid-base reactions a little bit more. So, before we can even get to the reaction, first we need to define, right? We need to define uh, what exactly is an acid and base, okay? So, quick thing we're about to do here. I'm going to give you two definitions. Um, the first is our heinous definition. So, um, basically, this was like the very first type of definition that was going around for a long time, okay? So, basically, an acid was defined as a substance that produces H plus ions in our aqueous solution. And a base is a substance that produces OH ions in the aqueous solution. So this was our Arrhenius definition. A very, for a very, very long time, this is what we assumed the acid and base was, right? You had to produce certain ions in aqueous solutions. And just to remind everybody, an aqueous solution is basically having water as a solvent there. So we can see, right, with this definition, how limited that could be, right? It had to be um, in an aqueous solution, and then, right, you could only produce H plus ions or OH ions. That's it, right? Now, as chemistry progressed over time, right, a couple more people came through, and then they came with another definition. So we have what we call bronsted lowry definition, and basically they said that an acid is a proton donor. Now, Dr. J, what the heck is a proton, right? A proton, just think of that as our hydrogen ion, okay? Think about that, okay? So, proton donor is acid, and a base is a proton receptor. So, we can see the huge difference between these two definitions, right? Both of these definitions are correct in our own respect, right? Because they're always going to be an acid or base. But in this case, with bronsted lowry we were able to basically broaden that definition, right? Because now we don't have to be in an aqueous solution and we not only produce an H plus ions or OH uh, ions, right? We're just looking at everything. Anything that donates a proton is an acid. Anything that accepts a proton is a base. That's it. Don't matter what, right? No matter what type of solution or if it's not in a solution or nothing like that, right? So when it comes to actually thinking about well, what's donating the proton, what's accepting, let's look at this down here, right? So acid, our acid in this case is HCl, our base is NaOH. Now let's talk about this, right? Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this acid. We said it's a proton donor. Base is a proton acceptor. So now we're about to get into why exactly, right, is hydrochloric acid an acid? Hydrochloric acid is an acid because it's going to give this hydrogen to this sodium hydroxide. That's the reason why it's an acid, because it's donating a proton. It's giving it to it, right? So when it gives that proton to this sodium hydroxide, it's going to form water over here, right? This OH combining with that hydrogen, H2O. That's what we're going to form there. Now let's talk about the base side. Why exactly is sodium hydroxide a base well a base is a proton receptor so like how we just mentioned this acid is going to be giving this hydrogen to the oh what that oh is doing it's accepting that proton it's saying give me that proton and this is what we're going to see here right that sodium hydroxide is taking it in it's accepting so with these acid-base reactions there's a little give and take that's going on here somebody's giving a proton someone's accepting a proton you got to have both in order to be an acid-base reaction. And when this happens, right, in this case, we got a strong acid, strong base, we're going to produce a water and salt. Once again, 
this is an example of missing a strong acid strong base. So you want to learn exactly why these are the products. I highly recommend looking at the General Chemistry 2 playlist. So all acids are going to be different in some type of way. All right, you're going to have acids that are able to donate a certain amount of hydrogens or protons. So if you're able to donate one proton per molecule, we call you a mono, we call you a monoprotic acid. Um, and if you're able to donate more than one proton per molecule, we call you a polyprotic acid, right? Mono one, poly more than one. So when we think about sulfuric acid, right? Sulfuric acid has two hydrogens. It's able to donate two hydrogens, right? It's going to take a donation here, bam, and then it'll donate this other one here, bam. And it looks something similar like this, depending on what it's reacting with. Now, of course, let's think about an example here. I always want to give you guys an example in this case. Um, so think about everything we just learned, all right? And now we're going to look at this in an example. Find how many liters of... 0.1 molar HCl, so hydrochloric acid, it is to neutralize 25 milliliters of, right, 0.35 molar sodium hydroxide solution, right? So we got a little bit of um, acid-base reaction going on here. And the goal is we're trying to figure out, well, how many liters does it take of this concentration of my acid to neutralize this amount of my base concentration here and we got our standard uh equation here our acid reacting with a base gives us our water in this case so what we first want to have to do right is we're going to have to multiply our volume by our concentration so anytime that you got a volume and a molarity we know that if we multiply those together, we're going to get moles, right? Because molarity is moles over liters. So in this case, I'm just going to, in this case, I just, this is 25 milliliters. I just converted that to liters, right? I didn't show that cell because at this point, everybody, you, you got to be able to do this cell like that, okay? So just remind everybody, it's 1,000 milliliters for every one liter. You know, do that conversion, and then you're going to get 0.25 liters here. Now, we're going to take that liters and then we're multiplying by the molarity. The reason why we're multiplying by the molarity instead of dividing, right, is look at our units. We got our liters, bam, bam, being canceled out. And then we're going to have our moles on top, which is what we want, right? So now that my liters are going to be canceled out, when I multiply this together, I'm going to get 8.75 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of my base now are we done not to jay no we're not because we still got to figure out how many liters we actually have of this okay so well dr j we got the moles of our base what are we going to do with the moles of our base in our wage we got to use the mole to mole ratio everybody stoichiometry stoichiometry is key right so with this chemical equation, right, we got our acid in the base gives me my water. What we see here is that our acid and our base are on a one-to-one -one ratio, right? There's one mole of hydrogen, there's one mole of hydroxide here. So when I figure out, okay, I got this amount of moles of my hydroxide, I can use this mole-to-mole -mole ratio to help me determine, well, how many moles of my acid I actually have, right? So, because it's one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to set it up like this. 8.75 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of hydroxide times our ratio, mole-to-mole -mole ratio, having my one mole of hydroxide on the bottom to cancel those out. You know, on the top is my moles of hydrogen, right? Because that is ultimately going to give me my acid. So, what we're going to see here, because it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's going to be the same number. All right, 8.75 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of my hydrogen. Now, from here, can we figure out our liters? Yes, we can. Well, how can we do that, Dr. J? Because they gave me the concentration. 
So we understand that when I'm looking at this, this 0.1 molar, right, solution is my acid. And we're trying to find the liters of this concentration here. So we should understand that we can use molarity towards our advantage here. Molarity, once again, is moles over liters. So how am I going to set this up, right? I'm actually going to flip it right in this in this manner. So my 0.1 moles of HCl on the bottom, liters on the top. 0.1 goes with the moles, right? The number goes with the moles. Because this is telling me, right, in molarity, that I have 0.1 moles and 1 liter. All right, 0.1 moles and 1 liter. So I'm going to use this, right, to cancel out my moles and my acid, because this is my acid here, the H plus right here. So I could cancel those out, leaving me with liters on top, right? So now I'm going to do some division, 8.75 times 10 to the negative 3 divided by 0.1. That's going to tell me how many liters I have over, which in this case I have 0 0.0875 liters of acid. So it's going to take me this amount of this concentration to neutralize this amount of this concentration here.